This is the second session of our Saturday Millennium Dawn series. We are doing a new game, and this is the second session. Currently, we are playing the Kingdom of Abyssinia. After the failure of the Zanawi socialist government in Addis Ababa, a great revolution happened, coinciding with the famine that brought our country to its knees. Although we won the Civil War and the famine is over, Abyssinia is still in an absolutely horrible position. We have spiraling debt and interest rates. We have a lack of government cohesion after the breakdown society underneath the famine. And we almost got warred. We were blockaded by the Turks, the Egyptians, the South Koreans, as well as numerous others of that defensive alliance, which is very opposed to us. Zara Selassie is not an absolutist monarch. He is a constitutional monarch, but we have unable to have the government or national cohesion to actually do elections. And as such, he will serve until such time as that is possible. The Ethiopian government receives a suitcase from an undisclosed third party addressed to His Majesty's government. After a thorough check of the containments, the Abyssinian Secret Services determined that the suitcase likely came from the Italian embassy, though it's impossible to know for sure. The contents of the suitcase are a series of written transcripts on an undisclosed discussion among Italian and Egyptian delegates. It regards Egyptians' plans to directly intervene in the Somalian civil war in a move to put military pressure on Abyssinia. We received a series of correspondences between the Italian minister and the Egyptian leadership, wherein they plan on intervening in Somalia in order to exert influence there, which of course we cannot allow. We have had a lot of very aggressive diplomacy from Lieutenant General Mahmoud, but I hope that we can find a peaceful resolution. He was one of many of the groups that blockaded our coastline for trade and also allowed many nations blockading us to go through the Suez Canal. We may be at our lowest point in years, even during the era of Mengitsu. Things in many ways were not this bad. Outside actors, bad actors, those who ignored our country during the greatest famine in our people's history, now are hostile against us and demand change, but we will not listen to them. We will not. Abyssinia will not be pushed around like we have been in the past and other African nations have in the past. We are opposed to colonialism and imperialism and any form that takes in the modern world, which we've already seen. We will stand firm and we will stand strong. We are just beginning our talks and he's Indeed. Liberal. Indeed. Liberal there's, 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 a lot of, uh, there's a lot of diplomacy going on right now, but uh, let's make sure we have time for each other yeah, here. There's a lot to untangle, I'd say. I agree. First off, I would like to formally thank your government for the package that we received and the actions that we were able to take in that regard. I will say that I know that despite our talk with Lieutenant General Mahmoud, he did meet with uh, Mohammed Morgan. I also met with Mohammed Morgan, leader of Yubaland, and I, frankly, I am very worried about that situation. I asked as to his intentions after he took power in Somalia and if he had any future conquests, and he refused to give an answer. So I'm very worried that we might see an offensive from his government into Puntland or Kenya or some of the neighboring countries in the Horn of Africa, which obviously Abyssinia's military is not the best after the civil war, but we are committed to peacekeeping in this region. So I hope that Italy will be a partner in ensuring that this happens after you did control these regions at one time and we knew it mean no offense here, but did obviously create a lot of the uh, instability that does exist to this day. So I hope that Italy will be committed to ensuring that we keep the peace in the Horn of Africa. Yes, we will we will send peacekeeping forces uh, if it's necessary. We believe Indeed. we are partly responsible for this because we have known of Egypt's plan for a long time, but we wish to solve them internally. Greetings. Ah, Colonel Gaddafi. First off, I would like to say that we will be having our next African Union meeting on the first of July. Uh, first of July. So just a heads up. I am. I I, I get a bit uh, emotional thinking that my dream of African Union is being realized more and more. We will and build I it together, that... brother. We will build it together. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I believe that the, the 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 next stage is something even more radical people have laughed at me for saying this I, well, let's hear it i would love to hear it we need, to unify. we need to politically 
begin the process of unification of the African Union, be it by doing a combined military of sorts or doing a combined economy of sorts. Kodo uh, if I could say, one, I thing, that... one thing I planned on suggesting in the next African Union meeting was the creation of an African Union Defense Force. It is not a standing army, but it would be a collection of volunteers from nations working together to ensure that we take care of issues within Africa by Africans. In the future, I hope exactly. that that could be expanded upon. I am being, I am more and more disappointed that the nations of the United States and Russia and mm -hmm. China are influencing all Africa only for their own profits. They want, in the profits they want only us. exploitation. That is all foreigners and, have ever wanted from us. And we must ensure that that does not continue. It's clear that capitalism and socialism do not work. Instead, we need to find a reasonable third world alternative between the two, a Jamkharia. Mm. Mm. A state by the people, not by some rich man from 2000. I will say this, Colonel Gaddafi. I am a constitutional monarch and I support democracy. Although, pure capitalism is not something we plan on implementing in Abyssinia. Mengitsu proved that communism and socialism doesn't work. The recent Zadawi government showed that capitalism barely functions. I think a strong state led system combining a small degree of a private market and private investments combined with heavy government control and spending is the way forward. That's what we will be implementing in Abyssinia, and I hope other nations do so as well. But exactly. let me say, I am committed to democratic representation in Abyssinia and in all African countries. We will not be legitimate if we do not become democratic nations. And I hope, Colonel, I have great respect for your leadership, that in the future, you will consider opening up your own country to elections. Though, I will obviously never force it on a nation such as yourself. Of course. The, the problem with our nation is that uh, I am not necessarily the leader. I am merely the guide of the revolution. And the revolution is a far step away from stabilizing. You see, of sadly, course. our nation is still a developing one. We have a huge problem with corruption. And if we can keep this between the two of us, I expect that my death, it will happen soon. Someone will betray someone else. All right, wonderful. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second recent African Union meeting. This is a shared commitment, a shared agreement, and a shared responsibility to the future of the African continent. Whenever we have been disunited, which is almost our entire history, only one thing has occurred, exploitation. It is the uh, commitment of Abyssinia to ensure that this does not happen ever again. And I know that many of you here agree with those principles. To start off with, uh, I would like to formally say that Abyssinia is now recognizing the government in Egypt after they have stated their commitment towards democratic elections. And we hope that they will follow through on that. If I may address one point. the I, <clears throat> I have been told that the republic the kingdom of spain has been sending units into the congo and is now taking care of the regime in rwanda how shall we respond to this this is another act of this foreign is an intervention. Act of colonialism. they are no, fighting no, rwanda yes. which is the aggressor but having foreign interference is something that is absolutely unacceptable on that point uh, wait, wait, I would like uh, to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I would like to formally propose the creation of an African peacekeeping force. This will be a entity administrated jointly by all of our nations within the African Union, which will allow for peacekeeping forces from numerous African Union countries to be used in order to stop all wars of expansion within the African continent. This will ensure our political and military independence by ensuring that we deal with our own problems ourselves. So there will be no more need for such interference, such as by Spain interfering with this war against Rwanda. Yes. The motion passes almost unanimously with only one abstention. We will create the African PC Keeping Force, which will allow us to ensure that we deal with our own problems by ourselves. Uh, what nations are currently able to intervene in the war to stop the Rwandan aggression? Talk on the African peacekeepers, since I actually have the focus to form African peacekeepers. Very well. I, I would suggest then that uh, Nigeria pursue that in their focuses, and uh, that Nigeria and perhaps Egypt, which I know can intervene, provide forces in the central yes. uh, democracy to ensure that Rwanda's government is uh, stopped from these aggressive actions. What uh, South Africa wants to know what guarantees uh, the Egyptians that they are going towards democracy? 
uh, is they will have an election in 2008. If that does not happen, uh, obviously actions will be taken. Okay, we won't recognize Egypt until those actions are taken. Very well. In that case, we will bring the end of the second African Union meeting. We will uh, meet again the 1st of July of next year. At this point, I will be heading to Madrid to speak with the Spanish government, Egypt, and Nigeria. As soon as you can, please get volunteers to deal with the Rwandans. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Ah, sorry. Hello there. President Nesavit. It's good to speak with you formally. As it is to speak with you, Mr. Uh, leader of Abyssinia. I would like to have a formal talk after the very aggressive and, uh, I think, misinformed diplomacy we've been having in the past. Agreed. I think that there has been quite a many miscommunication in the past. Indeed. There, there are many people have been, I was saying, who did not wish for me to come have this meeting with you. But I think that it is best that we try and discuss the situation that happened. We're in, you, you blockaded my country, which could frankly be, have been an act of war, but we obviously we did not wish to engage with your uh, military. Uh, you are aware that our government is a constitutional monarchy and we plan on implementing elections as soon as we can. I know a lot of nations seem to have this idea that democratic elections happen instantaneously overnight, but as we know, democratic elections, true democratic elections, don't do that. Agreed. Our yeah. government is committed to democratic dealings, as I'm sure you have heard from our dealings with other African Union members, and as soon as we are able and have the political power, which we expect to be within the year, we will be implementing uh, elections here in Abyssinia. Well, as long as Abyssinia agrees to Turkish uh, oversight to oversee these claims... Absolutely not. That is completely unacceptable and a very unreasonable no. demand. No, of course we're not going to allow a foreign country to oversee elections here. UN uh, delegates, we would be happy to have them here to oversee the elections, but individual countries, of course not. Uh, then, okay. Then we could we compromise on the UN. We would, we would be we're, we're happy to, to have people oversee our elections, that. but we're not going to have individual countries do it. We will have international recognized bodies do it, such as the United Nations. Are you, are you asking why we blockaded trade to Ethiopia? Correct. You, you, uh, you blockaded a sovereign country with your navy outside of your sphere of influence. That to us is very concerning. So well, we just wish to know if it was due to your uh, misinformation <laughs> as to our elections and our constitutional nature, or if it was for another reason. That was mostly the reason. We were under the impression that Ethiopia had a militaristic uprising, a coup. Um, and, and there were also claims that Ethiopia was conducting anti-terror operations under within the, the core state of Ethiopia, Eritrea. Um, and the northern provinces, yes. Uh, where does the information come from? Egypt. And <laughs> we had, of course. Uh, blockaded we had then blockaded uh, your ports in the north. Indeed. Of that. Repay you for any... We don't need to feel the need for recompense. We just hope that we can have a new era of relations between Ankara and Addis Ababa, and that you make it clear to the rest of the world the reality of this matter. Because as we know, the sad reality is many African countries are not listened to, respected, or given any credence. And so if nations such as yourself, which are recognized broadly by the international community, can communicate the reality here in Ethiopia. That would be all the recompense we would ask for. Of course. And you, which, what exactly would your reality be? The reality is that we are a nation destroyed by the corrupt government of Zanawi, plagued with a mass famine that the world failed to respond to or help with, and a civil war perpetrated by rebel groups and terror groups within our country that formed a united coalition against this government. After which, we have managed to take control and are very close to implementing elections and rebuilding our country. That is the only reality here. Uh, I, I suspect within a couple months, I will be able to enact proper elections. Many people have suggested that I should have immediately done them, but I've made that position clear. I was not willing to put in place democratic elections, which I know would be easily corrupted. Again, I am a servant of the people of Abyssinia and I will always do things in their best interest. And I could not in good faith implement these immediate elections that so many countries were demanding, which would have been uh, completely non-democratic, to be frank. Well, uh, now, that, now that you have approached us and actually cleared the waters, we are more than willing to cooperate with you. Wonderful. We hope to cooperate with you as well. Uh, one, one topic I would like to very briefly bring up is the Egypt situation. 
uh, we, we are cooperating with Lieutenant General uh, Mahmoud, but there's been a lot of very troubling things from his government, to be quite frank. Uh, he, he did briefly support the aggressive actions of Rwanda in the Congo, after which we had to have a talk with him. Uh, in addition to that, he has claimed to be doing elections, but he set them four years from now. And that is worrying to many African Union members. So I, I would just ask that you work with us and the African Union to make sure that one, democratic elections happen there, and two, that he does not negotiate in bad faith and take dangerous actions. You have our word that we would work with you in cooperation against Egypt. We have no, we don't even recognize their government as the Indeed. rightful government. We, we really only cooperated with Egypt for the sole purpose of moving our ships through the Suez Canal and having the Indeed. ports to resupply. Abyssinia has formally recognized the Cairo administration for two reasons. One, we hope that that will encourage them to actually implement democratic elections, since if there is no recognition for the government, it increases, we suspect, the, ch the chances of the lieutenant general there seizing power. And two, in order to stop Egypt from letting ships into blockade our economy, as, again, people were starving to death, and I would rather recognize a foreign government than uh, have my people starve, so. That's reasonable. Indeed. And uh, we, we apologize for being so uh, aggressive in your time of need. Again, it's understandable. There was a lot of false information going around and a lot of assumptions being made by country. We hope that we'll be able to clear the air and that the nations of the world will recognize the situation in Abyssinia. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time. I'm glad that you are a most reasonable band and I look forward to uh, cooperation in the future. Of course, we, as do we. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Just in time for the African Union meeting and the UN meeting. So we are now a democracy. We are formally a constitutional monarchy, as we promise all the major powers of the world. We honor our word. Lastly, uh, we recognize the speaker from Abyssinia. Gentlemen, as promised, Ethiopia, now Abyssinia, has implemented democratic elections. As I promised from day one, this is a constitutional monarchy. There are many who suggested that I took power violently. There is nothing to back those words up. I was approached after protesters stormed the capital and overthrew the leadership in Addis Ababa and asked to help stabilize the nation, which I did. Soon after which I had to deal with the terrorist rebels, which we put down. I find it very strange. The nations such as India, Russia, and France attempted to embargo internationally with the Security Council of my nation, when while we starved to death during the famine, they did nothing. The International Order and the Security Council is nothing more than an imperialist tour to take advantage. As such, we support Brazil's attempt to become a permanent member of the Security Council, and if that is not the case, frankly, we question its very existence. Abyssinia lives. We will thrive. We are a democracy. Who those who say otherwise, you have nothing to back up your words. Thank you. After five years, we have managed to actually get democratic elections, stabilize the budget, and get out of a fucking depression. So it only took five years, which is kind of realistic. That's usually around the time frame it would realistically be for something like that. So we, we are actually kind of in a stable position. Our interest rate is 5.9. We have 30 factories, most of which are civs with a couple dockyards to produce trade vessels as we will begin to grow our coffee uh, exports. Whoa, India just got admitted into the Security Council. Damn. They love better of uh, let. Yep. All right. Brazil and uh, India have both been added to the UN Security Council permanently. That is wild. I, I'm really hesitant to try and secure more foreign investment due to the fact that it can't be mutual and due to the fact that that would give outside countries more influence over us, which is already hurting our politics. Oh, shit. We went to stable growth. Oh, we just got so lucky. We went, we went to stable growth without having to do it ourselves. That is fucking huge. All right, in that case, we're going to use all this political power to raise our tax rate then. Look at that. We're actually running a very solid surplus now. Perfection. All right, we are currently undergoing election season right now. We're about to have elections, so we'll see who will win. I'm trying to think what we really need right now. Wow, we are really running a surplus now. Look at that. We have almost completely stabilized ourselves after 
everything that happened previously. I think at this point, we're going to save up our political power. I want to get the tax rate up to 30%, after which we'll have some funding for other things. I want us to, uh, to boof where is it? I want us to get free emergency treatment. We want to make sure that people can get treated in the hospitals. We obviously can't afford really good quality healthcare like the rest of the other countries around the world, but free emergency treatment and building of hospitals around Abyssinia is huge. And then I want to do improve the social safety net and add pensions for our citizens. So those will be our two uh, major priorities in the near future while we do that we will work on properly incorporating the uh northern territories which obviously were in rebellion pre previously but the war for terrorism has just begun many former soldiers of the now dissolved edf joined the newly again formed eplf in neighboring sudan and prepared to fight back it's up to us how uh now which path we will take I used the tax rate. We are running a very nice surplus. Our GDP is up to 1 trillion. That is huge. We have come so far. Our GDP per capita has, it is, I think, almost quadrupled since the early days of the famine. So we are in such good shape right now. This is really fantastic. So just a reminder, guys, they, they bought uh, Finland, uh, all in the island islands off of Finland for half a trillion, which is a lot of money. Normally, I don't allow that, but these islands are not too inhabited in. It's a gray area. Uh, and then they tested a nuclear device on it, which frankly has probably made all the Nords absolutely hate Germany. So this is a very precarious situation. I do want to have this substantial safety net. It is pinnacle that we build a future for Abyssinians where they are able to build a business, live a quality of life that has never been seen in this country before. And this government is committed to giving them the tools they need for that. We will not let Abyssinians go hungry. We will not let them not be housed. This government will always prioritize the good of its citizens over all else. And then we're getting more. We get five sieves from China in 35 days and then five sieves from the Germans in 55 days. We're about to get a lot more factories. Our economy has just gotten so big, it's ridiculous. International investment is very powerful. All right, we got that last mill, which is wonderful. We'll be able to start producing utility vehicles, which we've obviously need. It is time to work on an infrastructure drive. Obviously, we need roads now that we are becoming an industrial hub of Eastern Africa and really Africa as a whole. So it's critical that we build the infrastructure within our country now to be able to facilitate that. There's a lot of coffee exports, so we need to start getting down into the ports. The Masaba Cement Factory is one of the most powerful local conglomerates, important for the building boom that we plan for the country. By increasing the funding distributed to Masabo, we will be able to finish building projects quicker. Wonderful. Mr. Zimasi, let me speak clearly. The world wants to isolate Germany, but I don't think that this is a quite smart um, decision. You have done two nuclear tests without provocation, and you have an attaché with Yugoslavia, which is taking unilateral military action in the Balkans. I frankly yes. don't know what to say. That's indeed right, but we feel betrayed by your country. We feel very betrayed because we did everything. Everything Germany does is the result of the isolation from the West. As you see, we are not the Germany we were, we was when we supported you. Because you and the West are trying to push us into this direction. Germany stands strong. You, you put me in with the West now, I see. Yes, yes, because, because you're quite clearly work with the rest. We did everything for your country when the world was silent. We risked the life of German men in the Red Sea crisis. And this is the thank for German support in Ethiopia. We, we have condemned your nuclear strikes or your tests, because obviously, why would we support the continued proliferation of nuclear weapons? The hostility that we are now getting from you, frankly, is Shocking. It's as if we're speaking of an entirely so different as country. Lassie, as Lassie, you did the first hostility, we just react. In that case, we training. unfortunately will have to uh, also take action. I would like to announce that we are going to be shutting down uh, Volkswagen plants within okay. uh, Abyssinia, and we will be closing off all trade with Germany. Uh, thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. So we did shut down those Volkswagen plants. I deleted two sieves, which we'll say was the Volkswagen uh, plants that Germany built. And uh, yeah, we shut them down. The other ones we will repurpose into other things and nationalized by the federal government. We, we can't work with these German warmongers. It is, it is just unacceptable. Uh, if you want to join these games, they're open to everyone. Just uh, join the Discord. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a great time. I mean, this is such an interesting playthrough as Ethiopia, Abyssinia. Gotta correct myself there. It's alright. Have a good night, guys.